everybody. It is so good to see you again. Hey, we got a fun topic again tonight, but do I say that every time? We are in the middle of our CCO live episode number 77. You know, one of the things that came in as a topic request, and we're going to talk about you providing uh, other topics for us, is how to pick a specialty credential. So you're already certified and you're thinking I've been doing this for a while um you know is it is it time to branch out or you've been working in a specific area um maybe you've been doing ERs maybe you've been doing orthopedic maybe you have been doing surgery uh, you the ideal thing to do is to go get that credential you have the background But the hard part is, how do I decide what credential to get? How will it benefit me? Is there a difference in the different credentials, meaning the different organizations that provide these credentials? Absolutely, there is. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Some of the specialty credentials that are available to you. And maybe uh, mention a few things you had not thought about that will help you to determine what is the best avenue for you. Maybe it will assist you in doing the research for the credential. Sometimes you just don't know where to look, or you may not realize that these other avenues are available to you. Hi, Bethesda. I think I said your name right. Beth Zydia. <laughs> That's a gorgeous name. Vasquez. I know I can say that. Denise, hello. Again, there are some really exciting credentials that would validate your background and your knowledge and your skill set. So there's, we've talked before about, you know, um, how to um, uh, investigate or uh, look into, you know, should I get a credential, another credential after I uh, just became a coder, you know, should I wait, Uh, and so on and so forth. And we've, we had done something similar to this a very long time ago. Remember, we've got YouTube videos going back a decade. Uh, be very mindful of that when you go and search medical coding cert that you pay attention to the date <laughs> because you don't want to watch a video from a decade ago uh, and it not be as applicable today. And that being said, it's important to know that new credentials rise up all of the time. And some certification organizations may not have had much clout in the industry five years ago, but they do now, you know, uh, uh, and that's important to understand. Hi, everybody. I can see you. Uh, I can see you uh, popping in now and where you're from. That always uh, makes me happy to see where you're coming in. And uh, there we go. Uh, Denise says, I want to pass my CPC and then get a specialty credential. And Denise, that that is brilliant. That's, that is important. And we did do a video um, not too long ago on that very subject is, you know, should I get one right after or what's the next credential to get? What's the value in waiting versus versing jumping in, get another one. Will it help me get a job faster? Stuff like that. So we're going to go on a little different track today. What we're going to talk about in again is how to pick a specialty credential, not do I need to get another one? But if I look at a specialty credential or where, you know, where do I look and kind of answer some of the questions you might have. Now, I have been talking all week long and my throat is obviously scratchy. So excuse me while I take a little sippy sippy once in a while. Mm. It's actually flavored coffee. Oh my gosh, I'll be up all night. But that's all right. It gives me lots of energy to talk to you. Um, Let's see. Lady T says, I was thinking about rheumatology certification. Ooh, you know what? I know that is one that that's pretty fascinating. Uh, University of Missouri has a lecture every year in rheumatology that I I try to attend. Uh, Just recently got offered a contract job for HCC coding as part time for webinar. Webinars have really helped me out. That's great, Denise. And this is the time of year when those... um, 
short-term contracts in risk adjustment and HEC work start popping. I've been getting emails uh, for that very thing. And so, uh, yeah, that's, I'm glad. Let's see, what about infectious disease credential? You know what? I know very little about that. Honestly, that is one with the pandemic having happened makes it absolutely more upfront than ever before. Uh, we'll have to look into that. Uh, let's see, Don says, which specialty credential holds potential monetary value, not just getting one for the sake of it? Oh, Don, that's a great question. We will mention that as I talk about the individual cred credentials, uh, what the value in the industry is and uh, pay scale, not necessarily pay scale, but again, um, maybe part of it's where you're located at regional versus uh, being remote, so on and so forth. Don't let me forget that, Don, but that's a good point. Oh, hematology and oncology, the conch. Uh, I, I agree. That's a good one. Midway through my CPC course with the AAPC. Great, Nikki. You just hang in there. A bit of advice. Grab a hold of as many practice exams as you can get a hold of. They'll give you practice exams, but we also have practice exams, uh, free ones and ones for sale. So make sure you're taking as many as you can before you set for the the credential. Congratulations. What what's out there? You know, we we need to determine what's right for you. So I kind of divided these up per organization. So the biggest one is the AAPC because they have the most specialty credentials uh, in our genre, in the medical uh, credentialing industry than anybody else. And so there's value within that, right? Uh, the You probably recognize some of these. And uh, I'm also going to give you a little insight into where you get educated for some of these. Uh, first of all, I would mention the CRC as an all-time favorite. I've got that credential. Uh, we were teaching the, the uh, risk adjustment uh, before the credential came out. And it is, everybody probably knows that's a passion of mine. It is only one code set. It's the ICD-10 code set. Uh, if for that credential to be right for you, the, the few factors that you need to think about is what's your background in path, uh, path uh, and pathophysiology. In other words, do you know the disease process? Um, uh, do you have a pretty good understanding of the pharmaceutical world, uh, medications, linking medications to a diagnosis, and uh, the treatments involved, both uh, the treatments and diagnostic tests, all of that plays a part in the CRC. Now, it doesn't mean you have to have them memorized or know all of them, but do they hold interest for you? Because that's the world you're going to be working in for uh, the for risk adjustment. So again, if you like the ICD-10 code set, if you enjoy the disease process and how you treat those diseases and how you test for those diseases, if you like reading documentation, then bam, that's a good credential. One of the uh, other perks about risk adjustment is, honestly, in the industry, that's the fastest rising star. Um, it has been for the last five years. Uh, right now, you do not have to have a CRC to be working in risk adjustment. Uh, you can have another coding credential, but that's going to stop probably pretty soon. Um, there's still a need for risk adjustment, uh, or, I mean, there is a, there's still a huge demand for risk adjustment coding, especially this time of year, because that's when the contracts all come due. Uh, however, hospital systems, doctor system, uh, doctor groups, um, clinic systems are hiring risk adjustment specialists, and they really want you to have the CRC. If you don't have it, that's fine. But having a background in it bumps you up. And if you have the credential, even better. It can make a difference in your um, pay 
as well as uh, making you maybe a supervisor or a manager of a team versus being in the production mode. So that is an extremely valuable credential and is going to only um, continue to become more and more valuable in the industry. So again, if, if I were to pick anything else for you, I would say, that would be the next credential I would set for. And it is not all about codes. There is, a, it's a, a business aspect and those other things I mentioned, no medications, no diagnostic tests, no um, treatments, et cetera. Uh, people who are clinicians and have a background really excel in the CRC because of that. All right, then uh, we look at the others, um, the, they are, uh, again, pretty valuable. They are specialties like the CPB is a billing credential. However, um, it if you are wanting to get into coding and billing, then that would be the way to go. But don't worry that it is the only organization that can get you a really valuable billing credential. I would also uh, look at AMBA and I've put the links to these organizations on the resource slide at the very end of the slide deck for you. And I'm going to bring these over. So let me let me highlight them while I have um, that on my mind. Let's see uh, right here. AMBA has been around for a long time, and uh, you can't just type in AMBA anymore to find them. I used to do that, but now there's several uh, organizations that are AMBA, and you notice that their, their website is extremely long, American uh, Medical Billing Association.com. Uh, if you were to type in AMBA billing, then you'd probably uh, get their website. So let's talk about the certifications that they offer because they are well known for their billing credential. Uh, a few years ago, they added a coding credential, but don't worry, you're already certified. So I wouldn't... Um, take that credential test unless you just wanted to, but you're duplicating and um, there's no sense in duplicating credentials, save the space behind your name for uh, the power players. So AMBA again is a very high level billing credential, uh, well known in the industry. A lot of the people that get this credential, they own billing companies. So again, they are uh, that that shows the value of this credential. In addition, they have a fabulous organization with a lot of support. They have a conference every year. It's not a huge conference. It's very affordable to go to it's the same time every year in Vegas. And uh, they make a, a lot of really good connections. Uh, and that's another thing to uh, make note of. If you decide to get a specialty credential, then what kind of support are you going to get for that credential? The organization, now we know AHIMA and the AAPC, they have a good support system. So if you get a credential with them, not a problem. However, if it's something else, are they going to have a good support system for you? AMBA uh, will they've been in the industry so long that uh, again they're well known as a, a billing um, um, uh, what do I started to say billing king or billing queen that doesn't even sound good that wouldn't work but uh, they they are gold standard in the billing the uh, billing credential that they have is the CMRS I think they actually have more than one CR is there more than one no uh, uh, I was thinking that maybe they had two billing credentials, but I, I don't see that. They also have a HIPAA um, certification, which again, that is um, that is good, but I, I don't think that it will be as valuable to you. It would be maybe a third or fourth credential if you wanted to pick it up. It's um, I, I don't hear that um, chatter about being HIPAA certified as much. So uh, again, it's not going to be a, a heavy hitter, although if you're 
specializing, there would be no way reason not to pick it up if it's affordable and you can do that. And, and you probably know most of it already. And uh, I, I've not uh, looked into that too much, but I do send people who are interested in billing over here to AMBA because they are the leaders. Uh, and AMBA is a reputable organization. Uh, they they don't um, spend a lot of money <laughs> investing on infrastructure as far as, you know, like a really expensive, fancy website. Uh, uh, they're, I know that they have a lot of money involved in their yearly conference, but the value that the pe the members get out of going by far outweighs the expense and the networking that's available to them. So uh, again, they're vetted, very valuable, very good. If you're interested in billing at all, that is the one to go to, I would suggest. Enough said about them. They also, again, um, let's see, they, they have um, three, you know, they have they have a billing, a coding, and that HIPAA credential, three of them. And um, let's see, I think that's that's these guys here. Might get them confused with one of the others. Yes, it is. Now, moving on, uh, I want to jump over to the uh, CIRCC, we call the CERC. If you like cardiology and you're interested in interventional radiology, this would be an extra, a, a, an excellent credential for you, but this is not going to be an easy credential to get. This is a tough credential. Interventional radiology uh, pays out very well, and there's a reason why that credential does, is because it's complex, uh, and, and, the, and the certification isn't easy to pass. However, <laughs> I do know where you can go to to get the education that you need. But let me just look over here to see if I'm um, hitting all of your questions. Uh, let's see. Lady says rheumatology and primary care e &M. Yes, you're right. Rheumatology is good. So I think if you're already coding that, you should absolutely look into that. You know what? I I really don't think that with a change in e &M, uh, this last year to medical decision making and time, in my opinion, humble opinion, I would not jump into getting an EM credential anymore. The CEMC uh, isn't going to carry weight like it did before. It, it's going to start losing value. Uh, it's just so easy to do EM anymore. You're going to have more under your belt by learning the diagnosis code set better and understanding um, uh, actually a CRC would benefit you more in doing the e &M in the future. So uh, just want to throw that out there. Uh, let's see. Can you get specialized credentials if you hold a CAA? Yes, you can. You absolutely can. Do you want to go with the AAPC uh, and be uh, uh, credentialed under two organizations. That's, you know, that is the only uh, sidebar. Now, the CCA is a, uh, like a first step to the CCS. The CCS is an inpatient credential. Its counterpart with the AAPC is the CIC. So you, uh, if you want your foot in the door of two organizations, and that's another thing you, um, you bring up is that, if you start jumping into these other boxes, that means you're going to have to pay in dues to each of these. You, CEUs may not uh, work for all of them. So if you get one CEU, it may only work towards this organization and not towards that organization and, and, and such. So make that a consideration when you think about specialty credentials. Uh, Randy says, so you suggest going through AMBA for billing instead of uh, CPB trying to figure out because I've already wasted money going to the tech college. Let's see the tech college. Now I can see that. And they only paid for the NHA exam with no, which no one accepts. You're right. That has absolutely no value in the market. The NHA, it, it, it 
teaches you how to take an exam and um, and, and everything. So it, there was no waste in that, right? It is It holds value. However, it isn't going to carry the weight in the market that these others. And yes, absolutely, I suggest you go to AMBA um, before you do the CPB. I would, I think they are well known. And um, however, Randy, do you already have another credential? Do you have a, a coding credential under your belt? And, and, uh, uh, but knowing that, um, um, if you just want to go straight for billing, then again, align yourself up with the AMBA people. They specialize in billing. Uh, she said, uh, learn from Lori, the CCO website. Then I did my year program. Oh, good. Good deal, Lori. You're right, Randy. Lori is fabulous. She is our social media specialist, and she is out there assisting people every chance she gets to put people in the right path. And she loves doing it, and she's very good at it. So thank you for bringing that up and uh, reminding us that she was able to, to help you. And if you're just starting out uh, beating the, I would, I would wait. It, to get a specialty credential. Uh, AMBA versus uh, CPB might also be a regional preference. Check your local jobs. That is absolutely another good point. Uh, <clears throat> AMBA has been around for a long time, but what uh, the AAPC has over AMBA is that um, they are so nationally known. And so if you're... Uh, uh, considering getting into billing, just start checking around in the job areas. Check the hospital, that uh, the HRs in the different places you are considering working and say, uh, you know, I'm uh, just lay it out there. Say, I'm thinking about getting, picking up a billing credential and I'm trying to decide if I want to get the CPB through the AAPC or if I want to go through AMBA and tell them that credential. And would that matter to you? Now, the thing about HR is they only know what the department tells them. So their billing department has a little template as this is what we want. And it could be 10, 15, 20 years old, you know. So even better is if you could um, find out who the contact person is for billing. And one of the ways that you could do that is going to your local uh, AAPC chapter uh, and finding out who works at that facility. And if somebody is already working in the billing, say, you know what, I'm thinking about, um, uh, you know, does does your facility care which credential I have? And and so that might be that might be helpful. That was a good point. Uh, what if you're just starting out again? Be very careful. Think about that. And uh, I, we have a video. So go back and look at the YouTube channel and put in um, the, and I believe the title was something to the effect of, uh, uh, let's see, is it beneficial to get a, an, a second credential? to help get a job if you're just starting out to have two credentials versus one. I believe that's what it was. Yeah. All right. Good. Uh, so let's, let's kind of move through some of these others. The CIC, if you want to be duly certified uh, with two different organizations and you're thinking about inpatient, the CIC and the CCS, they're counterpoints, but know that the CCS has been around since the twenties. And because of that, Everybody holds them at the highest esteem. The, C the CIC came out about maybe six years ago now, eight years ago, and it holds plenty of weight. And now you'll used to, you'd never see it, but now you see it. They want you to hold a CCS or CIC. Either one probably is good uh, uh, enough uh, against each other. It's just they, they test different and uh, we've done webinars on that as as well but they're the leaders those two are the two leading inpatient credentials do not sit for that credential unless you've been in the industry for a little while you're not going to be a new coder and and get a job as an inpatient coder it would not it, it would be a disservice to you and to them uh, you just don't have enough experience in the industry so uh, again don't 
don't set for an inpatient credential or even pursue that as far as setting for the credential and trying to find a job until you've done it. And quite honestly, they'll hire CPCs to do inpatient coding if you've got experience. So, um, and then they'll say, hey, why don't you set for one of the inpatient credentials? All right, then uh, let's jump out of those specialty credentials for the AAPC because the rest of those are kind of compliance and, and auditing uh, document specialty and such, which are good to get into. Uh, they also will substantiate your knowledge of documentation and the rules and regulations uh, regarding compliance. Uh, uh, there's really not very little coding in those, just knowing the rules behind the coding. But um, uh, they would be a good one. Let's let's jump into the purple box real quick because that is the one that I have uh, set up for uh, a HEMA. And I just wanted to note it, that these are the credentials that AHIMA has. And they have some if you, that if you're wanting to get into compliance, management, uh, even hospital work, but you, um, um, let's see, some of that behind the scenes business side of medicine, this is where I would go. They're going to be the, the leaders in that. Now, here is your coding credentials, these first three. The CCA is a starting point. The CCS is the gold standard. The CCSP is the equivalent to the CPC. Now, the RHIT and the RHIA. The RHIT, they've been saying they're going to drop for some time. Uh, it is a, these two are degrees. You have to have an associate degree to get the, the RHIT, and you have to have a bachelor's degree to be able to sit for the RHIA. And it can't be just any bachelor's degree. It can't be in basket weaving. Uh, it has to be in uh, healthcare administration, usually, uh, by an approved uh, program. And then uh, what there, there's actually very little coding involved in those. Those are administrative jobs, the administrative aspects of medicine. The CDIP, now we're getting into things like privacy and security. This CDIP is documentation in improvement uh, practitioner, uh, but documentation improvement or CDI work. And then the CHDA is uh, when you start getting into analytics. So if you are a very precise and uh, you like that analytical aspect of tracking, you know, how many people have breast cancer in the United States last year? How many of them were HER2 positive? Now, how many of them were HER2 positive in the state of Texas? How many were in Denton County, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? You know, this is the, that's what that credential is for. And again, great support when it uh, comes to uh, AHIMA, they also have conferences, they have local chapters. And so you can, you, you know that getting a credential here and a specialty, uh, they're going to be uh, uh, very valuable. So the AAPC, any of their credentials and, and AHIMA are the, the two leaders in the industry. This CCDS and the CCDSO, that is a organization that is um, AXIS, and they're, uh, they're kind of interesting. These are documentation improvement uh, specialty credentials. Mm -hmm. If you're wanting to get into that type of um, uh, you're you're going to go in and, and look at providers documentation and get into education with provider education, then this would be a good place to go. However, this is not an easy credential to get as far as you don't just decide, okay, this is my specialty. I want to go into this. You, uh, to, to get into Actus, uh, you can join them. And uh, another thing is that every state usually has only one local, one chapter. Uh, but they're very active within that chapter. Um, this is, again, going to be management, supervisory, and administration type positions. Plus, you have to have, I believe, five years of experience in the field before you can even sit for the exam. So 
I put that in there because I'm actually going to get ready to set for this. And it is a um, it's an area that I enjoy. And it also follows along with risk adjustment, because that's what we do in risk adjustment. When you're educating, you're trying to get a documentation improvement. So it would be one that if you are a clinician or if you are interested in that avenue, start aligning yourself with them. And then when you can qualify uh, to sit for that exam, that means it gives you time to um, practice and, and get really good to practice, uh, to get the exam. Uh, let's see. Randy says, I have work. Uh, uh, I have experience working remotely, so it really is all over the place. So uh, all different regions. I've never seen requirements for AMBA. Uh, it usually always says the AAPC or AHEMA. That's good to know. That's good to know, Randy. And But what makes AMBA a little bit different is that these are people who own uh, coding and billing companies. So they're the ones that the people, uh, the providers outsource to, the hospitals outsource to these guys. So if that helps you understand the difference a little bit. Yeah. All right. So, uh, uh, again, this is one that if you are interested in documentation improvement, uh, one of the leaders. Now, what if you're interested in documentation improvement, but uh, you don't have a, all of those years under your belt, so you want to try something else? Let's look at what the AAPC offers and um their specialties so again uh, these are kind of core credentials of what we call those however now we're getting into compliance officer now there is compliance namus and some others that you can do that but certified document uh expert outpatient cdeo you can set for that and you don't uh there is no certification except for the uh, certified instructor for the AAPC that you have to have uh, a background. They'll let you set for it, that, but they're not, they're gonna tell you and suggest you need this amount of experience of time, but you don't have to have it to take the test. They're unique that way. So if you pass it, go better, you know, go good to go. Now, just because you pass it, that doesn't mean that um, they may come back and say, well, you have excellent, no experience, but you set for the credential, you've got the credential. And they may say, eh, we want you to have more experience when you go in and get a job. Or if you can show other areas that you have the experience, like if you're a clinician, then the CDEO is absolutely perfect for you. And that is, um, here is the certified documentation expert inpatient. Uh, they're, uh, again, uh, a little bit different inpatient and outpatient has different guidelines and rules. So I would suggest that uh, you might start with the CDEO and then jump into the CDEI, just like the other organization that I showed you before this, they have two, inpatient and outpatient. I was going to do the outpatient one. Uh, another area that uh, the AAPC has is certified practice management, but um, there is another area organization that we've worked with in the past that is well known for and and another reason why I'm telling you these is that they have support behind them remember that I mentioned that before Paycom is a um, uh, well this is a certificate they have a health information technology certified management they've got others so let me uh, this one here mm. Certified medical manager. That's equivalent to the one that you saw from the AAPC. Now, like I mentioned, the AAPC has a lot of specialty credentials. However, I don't really feel confident they have a lot of support for those, meaning the networking opportunities and being connected. It's not really their fault because I think they're just threats, uh, they're too thin, they're spread too thin. Whereas when you look at these other ones that I've shown you, like AMBA, like Paycom, like the uh, CDIS and stuff, this is all they do. This is their specialty. 
and they offer a credential in it. And um, that being said, you get the support when they get together or they uh, uh, you get into their their um, job boards and so on and so forth, because all of these help you find a job too. They have job listings. They're in the know for jobs uh, uh, in their arena. Then that also is beneficial. But Paycom is known for office management and administrative. Uh, and they, um, well, just for example, the nine domains of medical practice administration, they created that and they, you know, they are the ones that um, everybody in this industry is is a manager or an admin for a doctor's office or working in hospitals. And so they know uh, all the uh, hiccups. They when you have a question or a scenario that pops up, they network with each other and they, you know, you can send them this scenario and they go, oh, yeah, we know what to do. Or this is the resource you need to know. Or your that provider wants to see it in writing. Well, here it is. You know, so they are well versed. They've been around a long time. They also have a conference every year and um, they are very supportive. When uh, Laureen and I went to one of their conferences one time and um, uh, they said, Hey, do you want to sit for the credential at, at the time? We were just really getting involved with them. And so they said, we, we want you to sit for the credential. Well, we did. It was spur of the moment. Laureen passed it. I didn't pass it, but I came very close. But, uh, again, this was gosh, about, I think like eight years ago. And, uh, what really took me about the conference was, how much they networked, how much they supported each other, and um, and how that went outside just the conference. They have uh, locations and groups that get together. Uh, a lot of it was remote before we had to be remote. So again, if you want to get into management, office management, uh, and uh, supervisory work, look into Paycom. And they're going to be uh, one that's going to be beneficial to you. So that would be a, a certification that, um, again, one more thing is to, you don't want to jump into these type of certifications unless you have management and, and supervisory experience. Does it have to be in the medical field? Absolutely not. However, just because you have that credential and your coding credential or, you know, that doesn't automatically show that you have the experience. And, and so um, now maybe it'll help you get your foot in the door, but they also have job opportunities, but it has to be an area that you want to get involved in management. And it's very beneficial if you have a little bit of management under your belt. I, it could be a manager as a McDonald's, you know, uh, when you were a kid and you were diligent, you always came and pretty soon you were the manager of your team, blah, blah, blah. That shows management skills. So keep keep that in mind. I don't want you to jump into these blind. Uh, what certification do you recommend if you eventually want to get into a management hospital and administration? I would start looking at Paycom, Randy. However, if you have a degree, then um, your RHIT or RHIA might be beneficial to you as well. Uh, is getting an auditor uh, is getting an auditor certification of use now? You know what? I don't think so. That's another thing I was going to tell you that um, you're you become educators. Auditing was all pretty much all about E and M. E and M just throw it out the window. It, it changed. It's not. I don't even think. Honestly, I don't even think CPTs are going to be around that much longer. Uh, so I would start getting into CDI work. The key is going to be CDI instead, documentation improvement. And we are going to audit as coders. We're already auditors now because the doctors are picking the codes. Uh, uh, so again, until they morph that credential, uh, I would I would go more towards um, CDI. And then... Uh, I work for OBGYN clinic. Should I get my CPC or OBGYN certification? Alexandra, get the CPC. You don't need to sit for the OBGYN. If you sit for that first, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm saying that 
you can't work anywhere else with that credential. <laughs> so if you lose that job tomorrow, where are you going to go? You know, and, and that's a very niche. Now, if you had your CPC and then you go and sit for that credential, boom, that's fabulous. But you need to start with a core credential. So either get the CCS or the um, uh, CPC. Uh, either get the an inpatient um, CCS because CCS actually has outpatient and inpatient in it. Uh, but uh, you might as well go with the AAPC, get the CPC, and then turn around and get the OB credential. Mm -hmm. uh, is ER certification a good specialty to get into? Absolutely. They usually put you in the ER when they you first start out. They have you doing path and lab coding and ER, and then they'll move you maybe over to ambulatory surgery and uh, stuff. But yeah, get the an ER certification is a good one. To, to start out with. Now, I'm saying if you already have a coding credential, we're talking about the next credential, the specialty credential. So I'm assuming you're already credentialed. Don't get the ER certification by itself because just like the OBGYN, you've just cut your legs off. You can't go anywhere. Um, and, and why not get a core credential first, then get your specialty after that? Uh, yeah. Okay. You have Chrissy, you have your CPC. So absolutely. Yeah. Get that credential. You probably can pass it with flying colors because you're already working in the industry. Where can you get a pre preliminary circ education? Okay. Let's wrap up. Let's see. I think that is all the ones that I wanted to share the circ. Um, I actually forgot to pull up this credential and, um, uh, let me see if I can do it real quick. Uh, education. Uh, Stacy. Stacy Birch. Buck. Here it is. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, I'm going to bring up her LinkedIn. That's what I'm going to do. If you want the circ, first of all, you're not going to sit. This is not something you're just going to say, okay, I'm going to sit for this credential. Uh -uh. Oh, wait, shoot. I got all kinds of people talking to me. Ah, let me get rid of all this other stuff on my LinkedIn. And uh, this is where you want to go. Rad RX, Interventional Radiology Diagnostic Radiology Consultant. She has her own course. Now, in the past, I will, there was only one place that you could... Um, uh, and it's very expensive, but they are the best. And, uh, but it's very, very hard to understand. Very high level, uh, uh, you know, physician level type stuff. So if it's not one that you are in, if you aren't always doing that, then no. So what we need to do is go find her website real quick. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's see, maybe, well, you know what, just, just, we just have to get Rad RX. I'm not sure if I can get her contact. Oh, there it is. There it is. Here we go. There she is. So I'll put that in the chat for you because that is the one I would suggest for the CERC. We've actually interviewed her. You can go look at our, um, oh shoot, can I put something in the chat? Maybe somebody, oh, there we go. They've already posted it for us. Uh, uh, we interviewed her, we talked about it. And one of the things that is that she's been doing this for a very long time. Uh, when she sat for the CERC, credential, she had said, you know, there was only one place to be able to get this information. It's great stuff. I get stuff from them, but it's just too hard. And she breaks it down, makes it very user-friendly. Um, there is a big demand for this credential, but it's very narrow focused. And to me, it's very, very hard. I've thought about doing it just so I would know it better, but I just don't have the time to invest in something that intense. So if you do, absolutely check with her. Look at the, oh, there's the interview. Um, he, she, uh, they just put in for us um, and, and it'll talk about it. It, it really, uh, watch that interview first 
uh, Don and see if they can answer uh, when we interviewed her, Stacy, uh, answer some of the questions and spell it out for you. But uh, we vetted this one uh, uh, again. I would, uh, in fact, she's in one of my groups of we've got some specialists that all get together whenever we have a question. She's in there uh, by far the best one that I found that, that teaches the, the CERC or interventional radiology. She's got a course. I don't know that much about the course itself. I know she created, so I can't even tell you the cost, but it's all there. And, um, and like I said, we vetted it and she gives great support, excellent support. That's another reason why I wanted to talk to you about some of these. If you don't, if you uh, look at these credentials and you tell yourself, yeah, okay, that that's interesting. I may want to do that. But you have to know that one, uh, which Jesus mentioned before we got started, is don't forget to remind them that some of these certifications are uh, specialties are geographical. So like he brought it up a CERT credential, it's not going to do you any good if you're not next to a bunch of interventional radiologists. It, it, you, um, now, again, you can, you can do these remote. That is true. But uh, just be very mindful of, of that. An OBGYN credential, is that going to be beneficial to you if you don't live near any OBGYNs? And uh, again, uh, do you have experience working remote? If you don't, then you may not land that job. That may not be the next credential for you. If you're actively working in the field, then absolutely. Do not set for one of these specialty credentials right off, one of these high-level specialty credentials, if you aren't already certified in a, in a basic credential. So these are all little things you need to keep in mind before you pick that credential. Find out what you've enjoyed and uh, also based on your background, don't be jumping into CDI or management credentials if you don't have a little bit of that under your belt or it won't carry any weight at all, right? Uh, you know, just because you're a good test taker and you can get 20 credentials, that doesn't mean that you can do the job, All right? Uh, and you'd be surprised what, what counts as experience. Uh, like I said, if you've were a manager at McDonald's, that counts as experience, uh, supervisory work and stuff. Christy says, I currently have an RHIT. I've been the leader biller coder in a multi-specialty outpatient residency program for six years. We use physician-based billing. What is your thoughts on CDI? Absolutely, you need to get a CDI credential. You are primed, Christy. You have the perfect experience for that. And um, yes. Absolutely. Anybody that has an RHIT or RHIA, uh, CDI would be the way to go. Yeah. Now, CDI is not all about the codes. There's a whole lot more about CDI than picking the right code. It's all about the documentation and the rules behind it. Uh, it it's, it's much broader than that. So, Christy, your experience is perfect. Do it. All right, guys, uh, if you have a subject you want us to talk about, unpack, uh, uh, just like this subject, the, the, these CCO lives come from you guys. And uh, it's real easy to let us know. Go to cco.us forward slash topic hyphen request. Uh, you can just go into the CCO website and up there where it has a little search bar, just put request and then it'll pop up that location. You can let us know what you want us to research for you. And uh, we're more than happy to do that. Okay, guys. And then uh, always know that uh, if you want to have fun while you're learning, you can come to cco.us. It's obviously, it's obvious that we're passionate about what we do. We love to give back and uh, we try to offer as much free content as we can. We do have to eat other things than beans, though. So uh, take a look at the products that we offer for sale. Uh, we, we do education full time. And that is our specialty is education. Uh, 
the if this was beneficial to you, please share. Let others know. We don't do advertising like the other companies do, because if we did, then we couldn't afford to give away things free and free content that, and the education. So uh, that helps us. It also lets, you know, YouTube, LinkedIn and Facebook know that um, that what we offer is beneficial by the comments that you make and the fact that you're sharing. So if you want to help us out, that's how you do it. Uh, and um, from there on, we can do exciting things together by working together. Thank you guys for all the kind words, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Do you need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.